Market. Well, Seth, thanks. Well, joining us right now is Associate Professor of Criminal Justice at the University of New Haven, Mike Waller. Uh, Mike also became the Undersecretary for Criminal Justice Policy and Planning during the Malloy administration. And this is after a long, long time as a member of the Connecticut State House of Representatives. You were just saying, what, 32 years ago today, your first uh, That's right. January 1987, and, and I've been teaching at the University of New Haven since 95, so kind of pinging back and forth between government and academia. Yeah, well, you've got a lot of institutional knowledge that you can bring to us here at the table. Uh, why don't we talk, before we get uh, ahead to Ned Lamont, how do you think the Malloy administration did as a whole with just crime and uh, attempts at criminal justice reform? Well, when Governor Malloy arrived eight years ago, it was a heavy lift. There was a lot of problems to be uh, dealt with, and most of the things that you had to do would be really unpopular, and they turned out to be very unpopular, but at mm -hmm. least they happened. And I think, as uh, Governor Malloy has said many times, he'd rather be coming in today than eight years ago. But nonetheless, uh, Ned Lamont picks up that mantle uh, starting today, and I'm pretty yeah. confident he's going to do a good job. Yeah. Speaking of coming in, talk about the transition. You were here uh, when the voters elected Jody Rell. Huge transition there. And I know a lot of people have spoken about sort of a Rell effect, a transition from, like you saw, with Roland to Rell. Do you think that's sort of uh, going to be seen here with moving from Malloy to Lamont. Well, it's interesting. You know, I worked with five governors, starting with Governor O'Neill way back in the 80s, and each time you, you saw a big transition in personality. So Governor O'Neill was sort of this old-school politician. Governor Weicker came in as a former senator, a very different personality than Roland and then Rell. And, and as you point out, when uh, John Rowland resigned in the midst of the scandal, and, and, and Rell came in as the new governor in July yeah. of that year. There, there was a very different, I remember sitting in the chamber of the House of Representatives feeling, you know, this is much better, that there was a lot less pressure. And more optimism. Uh, yes, and, and I think just less confrontational. And I think, you know, Governor Malloy's hallmark was challenging the legislature every step of the way, and some people were very uncomfortable with that. And, and talking to the legislators getting sworn in today, I think they feel Governor Lamont brings a very different personality uh, to the game, and I think they feel more comfortable, more optimistic, and uh, and with good reason. Uh, you know, I think things are much better now than they were before. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's people are very happy to have a, a, a change. Uh, given that uh, Governor Malloy, especially towards the end of his administration, was very unpopular by the polling, is that going to help? Governor Lamont, when he comes in, to try to make some of those tough sells, like every governor is going to have to do, especially when it comes to the budget? Well, we'll see. You know, next month, in the end of February, Governor Lamont will give his budget speech, and I'm pretty confident if, if the past is any indication, <laughs> there'll be a lot of people upset. There'll be too many cuts, there'll oh, be yeah. new taxes, or it might be tolls. There's a lot of people who voted for him, too, are hoping. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. that's the way it goes. You, you know, all of the things that need to be done are going to be really unpopular, and, and you just want to make sure that you have the right mixture of things that are actually going to work and and uh, things that are going to be less unpopular, I guess is the word. But but that's a real challenge. There's no easy way out of the problems that exist in our state. I want to get some, some of your thoughts on some of the major issues. Lamont has been outspoken saying that he would sign a recreational marijuana bill. That's a very polarizing issue here in Connecticut. What's your take on that? I'm not so sure it's that polarizing. I mean, the public opinion polls show overwhelming support for uh, taking this out of the criminal justice system and putting it into the public health system, right? The the whole substance abuse, in particular marijuana. So uh, there seems to be overwhelming support in the legislature to do it. Uh, the public opinion polls are pretty strongly in favor of it. I think the real challenge there, and we've seen this in other states, is apart from legalizing marijuana, how are, how is it going to be regulated and how are you going to deal with all the old convictions that need to, in effect, be expunged? And the devil's in the details there. I know in New Jersey, where they're trying to do this right now, the legislature kind of got bogged down on the, the question of how to write the uh, the expungement or pardoning process for all the old convictions. So that's going to be a real challenge. Yeah, well, and that's probably something we want to come back on you, especially with your background in uh, criminal justice, to get you back here on the show, Mr. Lola. It's been a pleasure having you. Awesome. Glad to Thank have you, you guys. Here. Yeah.